What's going on guys, Seth here from Team Union. Seth, back as your coach of the Philadelphia Fierros for our Week 4 Team Builder in the GSL, the Global Showdown League versus the Oxford Omanites. So, looking right into it, uh, as you guys know, I have the Tapu Koko, the Hoopa Unbound, Mega Pinsir, Stack Attacker, Arcanine, Seismitoad, Rotom Mo, Swello, Milotic, Hitmontop, Weezing, and Frostlass. While my opponent has Jirachi, Chansey, Mega Deancey, Swampert, Terrakion, Gengar, Entei, Flygon, Venusaur, Rotom, Cryogonal, and the Braviary. So, main threats on my opponent's team, uh, the Jirachi, the Deancey, Terrakion, and Gengar are all huge threats. Um, Jirachi can, can do pretty well taking hits from things like the Coco and the Mega Pinsir, um, as well as the Stack Attacker potentially. Uh, even Chansey can be pretty bulky and hard to deal with, but Hoopa and Pinsir and Stack Attack kind of do really well against that anyway. Uh, Mega Deancey has a decent match against my team. It outspeeds a lot of my stuff, including my Mega Pinsir, and does resist its quick attack. So we're not going to be, be able to really hit it with that. Swampert's really nice for things like Coco, even though it does get Grass Knot. Uh, it's pretty good for the Pinsir as well as the Stack Attack. It can help with Arcanine. Um, and it's good for like Swellow. Stuff like that, um, as well as even the Weezing potentially. Uh, Terrakion does punch some holes in my team just a little bit. Uh, it has really good coverage for my team. I mean, it destroys like my first five mons, uh, and then does good good damage to the rest of them. Gengar can be pretty scary. Um, you know, my Hoopa has good special defense, but it doesn't resist its hits. So overall, Hoopa can be pretty scary, or not Hoopa. Gengar can be pretty scary for my team. Entei, I'm not too concerned about. I have, excuse me, the Arcanine, the Size of Toad, and even my Lotic. Uh, and the Weezing, excuse me. So I do have a ton of uh, coverage for that. Flygon, Flygon. I don't really see him bringing to this match. I don't see it really doing a whole lot. Venusaur is not terrible, but I do have you know a Mega Pinsir and a Hoopa, so I don't really see that doing much anyway. Uh, Rotom, I don't really think it's going to come to this match either. I mean, it can you know come in and, and outspeed some of my some of my more defensive mods and put in a little bit of work, but I don't see it doing too much. Quiragon, he could potentially bring just as a spinner. Can also do decently uh, taking hits from Coco and do okay against Pinsir, uh, you know, speed ties. And then Braviary, again, I don't really see him bring to this match. I don't think it has a whole lot of viability. Um, so let's just get right into my team. First up, we have Hoopa Unbound, our Lord of the Rings, uh, with the Choice Scarf and Magician. So running another Choice Scarf Hoopa set with Hyperspace Fury, Drain Punch, Ice Punch, and Zen Headbutt. With 104 in HP, 252 in attack, 152 in speed with an adamant nature. Uh, Hoopa punches holes in his team. It, like, it 2 KOs pretty much everything. Uh, it Okos or 2 KOs everything on his team. Uh, and it outspeeds everything with the scarf. So this allows me to outspeed anything on his team uh, as long as I have that scarf. So pretty straightforward, simple set with a Hoopa. Just meant to wear down his team to help, uh, help, uh, help support the team later uh, for my sweepers. Next up we have the Arcanine with the Lumberry and Intimidate with Agility, Flare Blitz, Close Combat, and Crunch, 208 in HP, 252 attack, 4 in defense, and 44 in speed with the Adamant Nature. So this allows us to outspeed a defensive Rashi before uh, before any boosts. So if he doesn't have any speed in the Rashi, we outspeed it without without having to get an agility up. And we 2 a KO it with Flare Blitz. So if he's fully defensive, we 2 a KO the Jirachi with Flare Blitz. Uh, we 2 a KO Chansey with the Close Combat. Lum is just in case I do get status. Uh, and agility is to outspeed everything on his team and clean up. So we have pretty good coverage for his team. Um, and the agility just allows us to you know, be a lot faster, get that speed up, and start to clean up on his team if his team is worn down enough. So um, this is somewhat of a sweeper for us. This can you know get up, get up in agility and kill a few mons or just get a lot of damage off. That would also be nice. But that's our Arcanine set. Up next we have MVP. Our stack attacka, uh, again running pretty much the same set, Jobbleberry, Beast Boost, Trick Room, Dryer Ball, Earthquake, and Superpower, 248 HP, 252 attack, 8 in special defense with the Lonely Nature to, uh, to get those attack boosting Beast Boosts. Um, same thing as always pretty much. So like, I mean, I'm very, I, I run the Choice Scarf Hoop a lot, I run this set on stack attack a lot. It's just because they're so good. They're just so good. Uh, we live a close combat or an Earthquake from a Jolly non-boosted Terrakion, so Jolly Terrakion does not kill us with a close combat or an earthquake. Uh, he's adamant. I do believe we live a close combat, but not an earthquake. I'm not positive though, uh, or it's close. Um, and that's pretty much it for this thing. I mean, we can take you know take a hit from something, set up that trick room, and sweep in the late game. So definitely planning on saving this thing to help clean up in the end. 
Next up, we have our Seismitoad with the Leftovers and Water Absorb, Stealth Rock, Earth Power, Scald, and Grass Knot, 248 HP, 252 Defense, and 8 in Special Attack with the Bold Nature. So this is our main uh, main Swampert answer, whether it's defensive or offensive. Uh, we 2 KO it with Grass Knot no matter what, and we are not 2 KO'd by an uninvested Jirachi's Energy Ball. So wants to run coverage for this thing on a defensive Rachi, we're not too KO'd, and we can do a lot of damage back with Earth Power. This thing is also really nice to help set up rocks. So, really important, really helping to support the team. Next up, we have a really, really cool set uh, in Frostlass, with the Focus Sash and Cursed Body, with Hidden Power Steel, Ice Shard, Spikes, and Will-O-Wisp. So we have 40 attack, 252 special attack, 110 in speed, with the Mild Nature. So, what's really cool about this set, is it's an anti-lead for the Deancey. So if he brings the Deancey, I'm predicting him to lead with it, just because that's what you normally do with Deancey, especially if you're going to see a Frostlass, because typically Frostlass is some sort of lead set to get up spikes and Destiny Bond and things like that. So I do expect him to lead with the Deancey if he does decide to bring it. We have a really good chance to kill with HP Steel and Ice Shard. So uh, he's going to outspeed me because I'm not max speed. He can fire off uh, like a Diamond Storm, bring me down to my Sash. I hit him with the HP Steel, I think we do about 80%, if not almost that, and then an Ice Shard does another like 18 to 20%, something like that. So we have a really, really good chance of Okoing him. I think uh, Hidden Power Steel does like 80 to 84, and then Ice Shard does like 18 to 20, something around there. But we have a really good chance to Oko that Deancey with this Frostlass, if not severely cripple it. Um, and then if possible, we can set up spikes. So I go for the... Uh, you know, hidden power of steel. So he brings us down to his sash with, uh, with like a diamond storm or something like that. Hit him with the HP steel, knock him out with the ice shard, and then potentially get up spikes or will o wisp or something like that on the next turn. So I'm really excited. I thought this frostlass set was really cool, and I'm actually pretty happy to be using frostlass in general because I didn't really think I'd be bringing it all at all this season. So I kind of like this. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but last but not least, we have our wheezing with the black sludge and levitate with gyro ball, will o wisp, pain split, and hidden power ice. 248 in HP, 224 in defense, and six, or 36 in special defense. Um, we're guaranteed to live free Diamond Storms from a no attack plus speed boosting nature uh, Diancy after Black Sludge. So if he's not invested in attack and he has like a you know, speed boosting nature, not attack boosting nature, uh, we live free Diamond Storms after Black Sludge. Gyro Ball does a ton of damage to the Diancy. Uh, we can potentially, uh, not Pain Split, the Ancy, but we have Willow and Pain Split for other things on his team, as well as the HP Ice. So, that is the team. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. Comment what you think. Let me know if you think there's anything you would have brought differently, or anything I should change, or should have changed. Um, but other than that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.